Hello, my name is Shelby, and this is Sarah, and we're both volunteers with Amnesty International at the University of Calgary, and we're here to tell you today a little bit about Amnesty International, the organization. So, I'll give you a brief history of Amnesty. Um, Amnesty International was founded in 1961 by British lawyer Peter Benenson. He became angry after reading a report about two Portuguese students who had been imprisoned for raising their classes in a toast to freedom. In response, Benenson published an article entitled The Forgotten Prisoners in the London Observer in May of 1961. In his article, he called on people to protest the imprisonment of men and women around the world because of their political and religious beliefs. Thousands of people in many countries offered their help and Amnesty International was born. Amnesty International is a world embracing movement working for the protection of human rights. <laughs> it is independent of all governments and is neutral in its relation to political groups, ideologies, and religious dividing lines. The, the method of organizing action was simple. We concern members of the public in touch with one another. And basically, like, we asked like, Amnesty members to come together as a group and to choose a prisoner of conscience, consciousness, uh, conscience, sorry. And um, basically what we do is, is when you choose one as a group and sponsor them, you work towards that person's freedom by appealing to specific governments, by writing letters and appeals and lobbying, things like that. Um, and we found it's very effective. There's no f exact way of knowing the impact of Amnesty's work. The first case Benison took on took 18 months. Some of our cases take a lot longer and some take a lot shorter time. But since there's a lot of different organizations that work on the same grounds of human rights and on the same issues, it's hard to say exactly what Amnesty's impact is because it is international work with a lot of people, but we have been able to trace a lot of our work. And in the last, let's see, since 1961, at least one third of the cases Amnesty members have taken up have ended in positive results. And so that includes uh, released prisoners, end of torture, justice for those under attack, refugees, given safety from harm. Um, in addition to appealing to specific governments, Amnesty International's volunteers, we also write um, letters to prisoners. So we write directly to them in prison or like groups that are involved or people who um, are in danger to show support. And um, a lot of those people have said that that's been really instrumental in their fight for human rights, just showing that other people believe in what they're doing and um, support their movement. And um, this message of hope can be seen in Amnesty International's widely recognized symbol, which is a burning candle set in barbed wire. The candle is a light of public attention that Amnesty members shine on the hidden abuses of human rights violators. The spark of public pressure that Amnesty members create in order to bring about positive change in people's lives and the beacon of hope and solidarity for people who defend human rights, often at great risk for the many who become targets of human rights abuses. I'll pass off to Zerch, going to tell you a bit more about what our fellow campus specifically does. Okay, so um, I've been involved with Amnesty on the UC campus for three years now. Um, over the years, we've kind of, there was a really strong movement on campus for Amnesty International. It kind of died out for a couple years and we're sort of bringing it back. Um, basically what we do on campus is we're primarily raising awareness of both issues, um, letting students and um, any community members on campus know about um, human rights abuses, what Amnesty is doing about them, and how people can get involved. So an example is each semester we have a film festival, we show three or four documentaries um, about a specific um, conflict area or a specific case. Uh, we have petitions available, those sorts of things for people to get involved. Uh, our most successful sort of campaigns are tabling events where we uh, have um, a table and letters for people to sign, like preformed letters. Um, for example, last semester we did one on Syria and we received over 350 signatures, um, sent them all in individually sealed envelopes to Stephen Harper's office in Ottawa, so we're pretty sure he appreciated that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, basically we just kind of want to stand up and say that um, people in Canada, even though we aren't necessarily affected by um, someone being imprisoned across the world for voicing their political opinion. Um, we care about it and we don't think it's right. And uh, yeah, so on campus, we're basically just trying to raise awareness about it and let people know. So do you guys have any questions or? Um, we actually already have it this semester, but there will be one in the fall. We usually have our film festival in November. So we can, total, we can definitely let you guys know when we have one next year. Right, I just wanted to mention, I just put this slide up briefly here. I just wanted to mention that a lot of people have questions about how Amnesty is funded, and specifically Amnesty does not 
um, receive funding from governments. We will not take it. And there's a lot of policies as to um, how large donations are handled, but it's basically just from individuals who want to get involved and who donate money themselves. If the argument can be made that pri the prison industrial complex is an antiquated system to deal with problematic uh, interactions between humans, and the argument, if the argument could be made that actually putting people within that system is a human rights abuse itself, why is it that Amnesty International is not advocating for the abolishment of the prison industrial system? For something better like the healing circle? Mm -hmm. Um, I think that like Amnesty kind of, one of the international organizations things is kind of starting off, like right now there's, well not right now, but since the beginning they've been started off with really abolishing death penalty. So they're kind of taking sort of progressive baby steps towards maybe ideally eventually that could happen. I don't know, I'm not, I don't run Amnesty International, but honestly, <laughs> but honestly, um, <laughs> Um, but yeah, honestly, like it is true and they're trying to kind of um, solve issues where it's just totally wrongful imprisonment and death penalty and sort of immediate pressing issues first. But that's possible. Yeah? Yeah, this is a silly and a cute question at the same time. I, I tried to buy a t-shirt for a friend, or a gift to a friend. Uh, I'm an international teacher, but they don't uh, receive any Canada address, so you have to be in the States to buy all the If you go on the Amnesty Canada website, they will mail you um, amnesty.ca. There, there is an Ameri there's a UK site, an American site, and a Canadian site. There's lots of local, regional ones, but the Canadian site specifically will ship. Okay. And they have, they, yeah, they have their own merchandise as well, like it's different than the UK one, but yeah, they'll t definitely ship to you. Cool, thanks guys. Yeah.